Shalom, 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 Israel. This is uh, Captain Paul Israel from Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC. And today's class topic is going to be on Yahshua and the 144,000 elect men spiritual transfiguration. Again, Israel, today's class topic is going to be on Yahshua and the 144,000 elect men spiritual transfiguration okay israel so today is going to be a good class lesson to discuss due to the fact that many of our viewers don't understand about the transformation or the transfiguration of yahweh's elect men of course in general yahshua hamashiach himself transfigured or transformed to a spiritual being okay understanding okay in its proper context similar to how you see the dragon ball z characters that uh you know those animation cartoons okay similar to like that yashua hamashiach transformed similar to those dragon ball z characters that we have that come out on uh tv or television okay um so based upon the visuals that you've been witnessing on this channel Based upon the 144,000 elect men Israel understanding, this is what you're going to have coming to uh, Yahweh's elect, who are the 144,000 men of Israel understanding. Okay, so we're going to give an example of Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah, transfiguring or transforming to a spiritual being of immortality. Okay, we're going to get that concept. So Israel, get out your pen and notepad and let's get into this lesson. It's going to be somewhat of like a quick lesson. So we about to get into it, Israel. Okay, so we're going to start out in the book of uh, Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1, to get the understanding. And then we're going to break away from the book of Matthew, understanding in this context. And we're going to go somewhere else. And then we're going to go back to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1 on down to get the context of Yahshua HaMashiach transfiguration. Okay, and basically it's going to explain how Yahshua's transfiguration is going to go into uh, the 144,000 elect men of Israel uh, transfiguration as well. Okay, so this is the book of Matthew chapter 17 verse 1. Okay, Israel, so this is going into the context of a certain day where Yahshua is taking uh, three of the, the disciples up with him onto a um, high mountain. Okay, so this is the black Messiah taking the three disciples to a mountaintop okay so this is the context matthew chapter 17 verse 1 and after six days yahshua take of peter james and john his brother is and bringing them up into a high mountain apart so again yahshua is bringing along with him peter james and john okay see so basically these are basically these are the disciples of Yahshua HaMashiach. Okay. So Peter, James, and John. So I'm also going to prove that James and John are brethren. So when it says James and John, his brother, James and John are brothers. Okay. So you had the uh, Apostle James and you also had the Apostle John. Okay. This John right here is the one that wrote the book of Revelations. Okay. But as you can see, James and John are brothers, okay? And to prove that, we're going to go to the book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 14, on down to prove that uh, James and John are brothers, okay? So Mark, chapter 3, verse 14. Now, of course, this is a, another different day uh, than what we just previously said that Yahshua took those three disciples with him to a mountaintop, Okay? But this is a different context, but this is just explaining that James and John are brothers. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. And he ordained 12, talking about Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah, ordained 12 disciples to follow him. Okay. That they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. So Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah, is commanding his 12 disciples to preach. Okay. So now we're getting the understanding. OK, we're going to get the understanding further that James and John are brothers. OK, so this is the purpose of this particular uh, point I want to make. Mark chapter three, verse 15. And to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. So Yahshua HaMashiach gave power 
unto his disciples to have the ability to heal the sick and to cast out demons out of people. Okay, so this is what Yahshua HaMashiach is giving his 12 disciples. Okay. All this is in the New Testament, people. And also it says power. Power. Okay, so this is what Yahshua HaMashiach is giving to these 12 disciples of him. Okay. He's giving the 12 disciples power. Okay. Mark chapter 3 verse 16. And Simon, he surnamed Peter. So Yahshua HaMashiach named Simon to be Peter. Okay. And we know Peter was the head disciple out of those 12. Okay. So now we're going to get to the main point of the matter. Okay. This is to prove that James is the brother of John. Okay. Mark chapter 3 verse 17. And James, the son of Zebdi, and John, the brother of James, you see that? And John, the brother of James, and he surnamed them Barnages, which is the sons of thunder. So Yahshua HaMashiach gave names to these particular brothers, right? To be named the sons of thunder. Okay, which he surnamed them Barnages, which means the sons of thunder. So John is the brother of James. So we go back to Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Yahshua taketh, meaning Yahshua brought along Peter, James, and John, his brother. So we now know proof that James was John's brother. Okay? So it says, and after six days, Yahshua take a Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. Okay, so now we got the understanding. Again, this is done on a different day than what we read in the Mark chapter 3 understanding. Okay, so this is a whole different day understanding when we go to the book of Matthew understanding. Okay. So these two different or two separate days, okay? Okay, so now we're going to go to the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 2. So this is going into the understanding when Yahshua took along with him Peter, John, and James, okay? With him to a mountaintop, okay? Matthew, chapter 17, verse 2, okay? This is the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 2. And was transfigured. And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You see this, Israel? It says, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. So, again, Yahshua HaMashiach transfigured or transformed into a spiritual being with power. Okay. And his raiment was white as light. So his apparel had changed. He had white clothing on. Okay. That's what it's talking about. And it said, and his face did shine as the sun. So Yahshua had spiritual lighting or spiritual power around him. Okay. He had a certain aura that was bright. Okay. That's what it's saying. And we go back to Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. This is talking about this has been done on a high mountain. Okay, this was done on a high mountain that Peter, James, and John was able to observe. This being done. On the transfiguration or the transformation of Yahshua HaMashiach, the black Messiah, into his spiritual being. Okay? And it says, And was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as light. 
So Yahshua HaMashiach had a like a power like situation going around him in his white apparel and his face had a lot of lighting around it. Okay. Similar to like the Dragon Ball Z characters, when they power up, they have a lighting effect around them. Okay, so this is the context. Okay, so Dragon Ball Z characters or other cartoons that have something like a power up scenario, they get everything from the Bible. Okay, so let's prove that the transfiguration or the transfigured word is going into something spiritual. Okay, and we're going to go to the definition of transfigure or transfigure. Okay, it says transfigure. It says to give a new and typically exalted or spiritual appearance to transform outwardly and usually for the better. So it says to give a new and typically exalted or spiritual appearance to. Okay, you see this Israel? So we're explaining that Yahshua HaMashiach had a certain appearance right he had a certain appearance that was spiritual it was a transformation okay it says to give a new or typically exalted or spiritual appearance to transform outwardly and usually for the better so he changed outwardly okay so there's no confusion in what the word transfigure means okay so the disciples observe Yahshua HaMashiach transform or transfigure into a spiritual being. Okay. With immortal power. So Yahshua HaMashiach had like a power effect of a transformation understanding with power around him. Okay. As you can see in this particular visual right here. Okay. This is power right here. So now we go to the next verse, Matthew chapter 17, verse 3. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You see this, Israel? It says, And behold, there appeared unto them talking about there appeared unto those three disciples john james and peter right those three apostles there appeared unto them moses and elias talking with him meaning now the disciples who followed yahshua hamashiach on this mountain right they are not observing the prophet Moses and the prophet Elias. When it says Elias, it's talking about prophet Elijah. So they're now witnessing Moses and prophet Elijah talking with Yahshua HaMashiach on the mountaintop. Okay, so that's what is being said right here. So again, Moses and Elijah the prophet are the holy angels of the Bible. That's how the disciples were able to see these men all the way in the New Testament understanding. Okay, this is basic common sense. Okay, so Moses and Prophet Elijah are the angels of the Bible. Okay, so that's why they appeared on the mountaintop as well to speak with Yahshua HaMashiach. Because the Prophet Moses and also the Prophet Elijah... Those men were found in the Old Testament understanding. Okay. So how are they appearing to be in the New Testament understanding? Because these men are the holy angels of the Bible. Point blank period. Okay. This is common sense. So now we go to the next one. Matthew chapter 17 verse 4. Okay. Matthew chapter 17 verse 4. Then answer Peter. And said unto Yahshua, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, 
let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias or one for Elijah, the prophet. OK, so Peter, who was the head disciple out of those 12 disciples, but he's presently there with John and James. Right. He's saying, hey, let's make a tabernacle for Moses, for Elijah and also for Yahshua HaMashiach. Right. Because he's witnessing three powerful men in his presence. Right. Let's go to the next verse. Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. While he yet spake, so what now? So when Peter is now making a statement to make those three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for Yahshua HaMashiach, it says, while he yet spake those things, right? While yet he spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. You see this, Israel? So it says, While he yet spake, talking about when Peter yet spake those words of him building those three tabernacles, behold, a bright cloud or a bright spaceship or a bright chariot, because that's what it's talking about, a bright cloud or chariot or spaceship because the chariots of the most i have a certain type of lighting around the ship that appear that appears to be a lot of lighting around the ship overshadowed them meaning this was a big ship okay to overshadow something you have to cover up somebody so when it says a bright cloud overshadowed them so th this was a big ship that hover around the disciples and behold, a voice out of the clouds. So Yahweh is speaking through this particular cherry understanding. Okay. Which said, this is my beloved son. So this is Yahweh speaking through the chariot to be a voice to be spoken unto those disciples. To let it be known that Yahshua is the blood son of Yahweh. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So your focus is. Your, so basically Yahweh is telling the disciples and primary Peter to what? No, focus on Yahshua HaMashiach, my son, over Moses and Elijah the prophet. Because Yahshua HaMashiach is the son of the Most High. You're supposed to acknowledge the son. Okay? That's what it's saying right here. Matthew chapter 17 verse 6. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. So what now? So now when the disciples heard the voice coming from this particular spaceship that was overshadowing them, right? They got scared because they realized, oh shoot, we was going off. <laughs> We're not supposed to be focused on no tabernacle for Moses or Elijah the prophet. We supposed to be focusing on the Son of the Most High, which is Yahshua Hamashiach, the Black Messiah. This is who the focus need to be on. Even though Moses and Prophet Elijah were great men, but the son of the Mosiah is greater. He's the top. Okay? So that's the focus. So they realized they was going off. <laughs> the disciples realized that they was going off talking that madness. Okay? Uh, but they repented real quick after realizing that voice that came from the cherry it was from the Mosiah. Okay? They repented real quick. That's why it says, and were so afraid. And they fell on their face to show a sign of repentance, okay, of the error of belief or error of their statements, okay, that was made. Okay, so now we got the understanding that transfiguration is in the Bible, okay, of Yahweh's elect, okay, understanding. Okay, so now, so now. Okay, so now we got the understanding that transfiguration is in the Bible, and we realize that Yahshua HaMashiach has spiritual powers to do that understanding, right? So the same application that Yahshua HaMashiach has the ability to transform or to transfigure with power, it's going to be the same equivalent understanding that the 144,000 elect men of Israel are going to have. And of course, Apostle Paul spoke on these things when we go to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. Okay, he's going to explain when this transfiguration or this transformation is going to happen 
for the 144,000 elect men of Israel understanding who are the ones that's going to be presently on earth at the time. Okay. And this is going into that portion of the 144 elect that's going to be on earth at the time. Okay. In this context to have that spiritual power. Okay. The, the transformation. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 52. It says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. You see this Israel. It says in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. So when we hear that last trump that's going to be blown by the holy angels. When, of course, Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming on earth, right? During the middle of that World War III circumstance, right? It says, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. So this is when you're going to see the transformation aspect of Yahweh's elect who are going into that 144,000 elect men of Israel understanding. Okay. And of course, the dead shall be raised incorruptible because the ones that died in Yahshua HaMashiach, right? Before Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming, they're going to be raised up in the first resurrection. Okay? Because they're going to be raised incorruptible. Okay? Because they died in the Hebrew faith. That's what he's saying. And we shall be changed. Talking about the ones that remain on earth, they shall be changed. Okay, until immortals, those spiritual beings or have spiritual bodies. Okay, the next verse is going to prove it. Okay, that the change in the transformation of Yahweh's elect going into the 144,000 men of Israel understanding. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53 for this corruptible. It says for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. You see this Israel. So now Apostle Paul is now saying what Yahweh's elect are going to be what going to be putting on righteousness. They was once in a corruptible body. Now they're going to be on now they're going to put on incorruption meaning they're going to be purified with Yahweh's righteousness and this mortal talking about the body must put on immortality so now you're going to transform into immortal beings who have power okay it explains when the transformation of Yahweh's elect is supposed to occur when you when the last trumpet sounded by the holy angels of the most high when Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming on earth Okay, so now you're about to get the understanding of the transformation of Yahweh's elect of the 144,000 men of Israel understanding when they supposed to transform to power understanding. Okay, of immortality. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 16. Again, this is Apostle Paul uh, writing this information down. It says for it says for Yahshua HaMashiach himself shall descend from heaven. With a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead in Yahshua Hamashiach shall rise first. So you see this Israel. So you see this Israel. It says, "For Christ, or for Yahshua Hamashiach himself, shall descend from heaven with a shout." So when Yahshua Hamashiach make his second coming on earth, Yahshua Hamashiach, of course, is going to be on top of that spaceship. Right. And he's going to speak a loud uttering words to the other hosts of the holy angels. Right. And then also with the voice of the archangel that's going into Michael, the archangel understanding. Right. And then it says, and with the trump of Elohim. So now you're going to have a trumpet that's going to be blown to usher in warfare 
that the holy angels and Yahshua are going to be conducting to go to war with these nations in the middle of World War III. Understanding. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. So the ones that die in the Hebrew truth understanding, right? They died believing in the black Messiah. They died following the Hebrew Israelite faith ministry understanding in its proper context. They shall rise first, meaning they're going to be in the first resurrection. They're going to be raised up in Yahshua HaMashiach's kingdom on earth analogy. Because they're not walking the earth at this time when Yahshua HaMashiach is making his second coming. But they're going to rise first, meaning they're going to be raised up in the first resurrection when Yahshua HaMashiach is ruling the earth. Understanding. Okay, it so, said, and the dead in Yahshua HaMashiach shall rise first. Meaning the ones that died in the Hebrew truth, they're going to be raised up in Yahshua HaMashiach's kingdom on earth. Okay. And also it's going to explain the context of the first resurrection in the book of um, Revelation chapter 20 verse 6. Okay, Revelation 20 verse 6 is going to explain the first resurrection, understand. Blessed and holy is he that have part in the first resurrection. Those are the ones that died believing in the black Messiah's understanding, meaning the Hebrew truth understanding. On such the second death have no power. The ones that did not believe the Hebrew truth, they they're going to be raised up in the what? Second resurrection. Okay, that's why second death have no power. There's no power if you raised up in the second resurrection. Okay, because you're going to get judged. But they shall be priests of Elohim and of Yahshua HaMashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years. So again, the ones that's raised up in the first resurrection, right? Blessing holy is that particular woman or male, right? Bless, it said blessing holy is that particular man or woman that have part in the first resurrection. Meaning they believe the Hebrew truth. But they shall be priests of Elohim and of Yahshua HaMashiach and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay. So that's what it's getting into of uh, the first resurrection that, that, that a particular man or woman is going to be in the kingdom with the black Messiah. Okay, that's what it's getting into when you get into the context of the first resurrection. And of course, the second death or that second resurrection is going into the judgment onto those particular spirits that's going into the lake of fire understanding because they did not believe the Hebrew Israelite understanding. Okay. Okay, so now we go back to First Thessalonians. Now we go back to First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. It says, for Yahshua HaMashiach himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Elohim, and the dead in Yahshua HaMashiach shall rise first. So now we got the understanding what it's talking about, the dead in Yahshua HaMashiach shall rise first. That's talking about the ones that died in the Hebrew truth. And they're going to be raised up in the first resurrection to rule with the black Messiah in his kingdom on earth. Okay. So now we go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 17 understanding. Okay. 
Now we go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, understanding. It says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet Yahshua HaMashiach in the air, and so shall we ever be with Yahshua HaMashiach. You see this, Israel? It says, Then we which are alive and remain, talking about the ones that are alive on earth, and remain on earth at the time of Yahshua HaMashiach's second coming on earth. Apostle Paul is now mentioning that the portion of the 144,000 elect men of Israel are going to get beamed up in them chariots that are being referred to as clouds. Okay. This is not talking about the rapture like the Christian church want to talk about. Okay. Nowhere in this context did you see the word rapture. Okay. Christianity just keeps on coming up with false doctrines. But this context, but in this context, it's talking about the 144,000 elect men of Israel are going to be caught up in the chariots or caught up in the spaceships or caught up in the clouds, right? To meet Yahshua HaMashiach in the air. Because why? Why are the people that remain on earth going to meet Yahshua HaMashiach in the air? That's because. In this context, this is getting into the 144,000 elect men of Israel understanding, meeting Yahshua the Mashiach in the air to go to war with the Gentile nations. That's why he's saying to meet Yahshua HaMashiach in the air to go to war with the Gentile nations in the middle of that World War III situation. Okay, because the 144,000 elect men of Israel are are the holy angels of the Bible, and also they are the security men of Yahshua HaMashiach. Okay, point blank period. So this is not talking about the one third of Israel or those other Hebrew Israelites that's going to be redeemed from the four corners of the earth. This is not talking about them in this context because those particular individuals that are chosen to get saved throughout the four corners of the earth that are classified as the one third of Israel and also that scattered remnant that's in the four corners of the earth. They're going to get beaten up in the chariots to get sent to the wilderness part two. OK, so they're going to be in the wilderness part two. Meanwhile, the 144,000 elect men of Israel are going to be with Yahshua HaMashiach and also the rest of the hosts of the holy angels going to war with the Gentile nations. This is what this is saying. OK, so again, you're not going to have the other Hebrew Israelites that are not the 144,000 elect men of Israel going to war with the nation. No, the other Hebrew Israelites. Outside of the 144,000 elect men of Israel, they're going to be in the wilderness. Part two. Okay. In the middle of World War Three going on. Okay. And meanwhile, where Judgment Day is going on with these Gentile nations. Okay. That's a, this is what it's saying. And uh, to prove that the clouds are chariots, right? To prove that the clouds are chariots or spaceships, we go to the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters. Who maketh, it says, who maketh the clouds his chariots. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. You see this, Israel? It says, the clouds his chariot. Okay, so the chariot is used in the context of clouds so clouds is metaphorical for chariot who walketh upon the wings of the wind because the chariots fly or the spaceship fly okay because just like a bird has wings it flies in the sky okay who walketh upon the wings of the wind because the wind blows in many different directions same equivalent goes to a chariot. A chariot can go many different directions. A spaceship can go many different directions. Okay, so again, when it says clouds, it's talking about chariot. So we go back to First Thessalonians chapter four, verse seventeen. Then we shall. It said, "Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds." Talking about with them. And the chariots to meet Yahshua HaMashiach in the air. That's what it's saying. 
And then when it says, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them. The them that's in the clouds, that's talking about the holy angels. Okay, the rest of the 144 elect. Okay, with them in the clouds. Okay, that's what it's saying. Because the 144,000 elect men of Israel are not all going to be here on earth at the same time prior before Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming on earth. The remaining of the 144 elect will be collectively as a group on earth at the same time at the coming of the Son of the Most High. Okay, they will all be together when Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming on earth. So the, again, so again, the 144,000 elect men of Israel are all going to be together when Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming back on earth to go to war with the Gentile nations. Okay, this is what this is saying in this context. Okay. And also, this is proof in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, that Apostle Paul is back on earth. <laughs> this is what it's saying. Apostle Paul is going to be back. That's what he's saying. He said he's going to be alive and remain to see Yahshua HaMashiach second coming on earth. This is what Apostle Paul is saying. So, like I said before. Many people regenerate on this earth over and over and over again. So Apostle Paul is letting it be known he is back. He's going to be around the time. He's going to be back around the time of Yahshua Hamashiach's second coming on earth. Okay. So this is just straight facts. That's what it said. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Okay, and he's including himself in his understanding. So shall we ever be with Yahshua HaMashiach. So Apostle Paul is putting himself in the salvation understanding. Okay, because because Apostle Paul put in works. <laughs> he put in works for this Hebrew truth. Okay, Yahweh is allowing him to be a part of that salvation mechanism to see Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming on earth. Okay. Again, Apostle Paul is a part of the 144,000 elect men of Israel. Okay. This is just common sense. Okay, Israel. Hopefully you enjoyed this video on Yahshua and the 144,000 elect men spiritual transfiguration video. Okay. To explain that the 144,000 elect men of Israel will have spiritual powers. They will transfigure. They will transform. We proved out the Bible that Yahshua HaMashiach was able to do that. So now the equivalent understanding is going to happen to uh, the 144,000 elect men of Israel when that last trumpet is blown. And also when Yahshua HaMashiach make his second coming to earth, the spiritual bodies of these men will be in full effect. Okay. To establish immortality. Okay. To go to war with these Gentile nations to restore righteousness throughout this earth also to usher in yahshua hamashiach's kingdom on earth understanding okay that's going to be reigning on earth forever and ever and we already got the context of the first resurrection understanding the ones that died in the hebrew truth they're going to be a part of that kingdom understanding under the black messiah's rule on earth based upon their righteousness believing the hebrew truth okay other than that, Israel, hopefully you enjoyed this quick lesson about this uh, spiritual transfiguration that Yahshua and the 144,000 elect men of Israel are going to be having in these last days, you know, to usher in righteousness through this earth. Okay, Israel, other than that, stay tuned for more videos on this uh, Kingdom Builders of Israel LLC YouTube channel. And other than that, Israel, keep learning, keep the faith. And other than that, Shalom.
Fatality.